Wagon Train, a classic television series from 1957, takes you back to the pioneering days of the American West. It follows a group of settlers traveling across the plains in their covered wagons, facing all sorts of challenges and adventures. The show is known for its memorable characters and the bonds they form on their journey. I first watched Wagon Train many years ago, and it was the sense of adventure and community that really stood out to me. One lesser known fact about the show is that it was inspired by the 1950 film Wagon Master, directed by John Ford. Now, I'm curious to hear from you. What's your most memorable experience related to Wagon Train? Did you watch it with family, or did it inspire you in some way? Share your stories and memories in the comments below. We're excited to hear about the moments that have stayed with you from this timeless series. Keep watching because there are many more funny, shocking, and sad facts to come. Your stories are part of the great tapestry that makes Wagon Train so enduring. So, let's keep the conversation going. Si está muerto, bien. Si no, lo mataremos. Bien, Trace, pero no sabemos quién es. Robert Horton, notable for his role as Flint McAuliffe in the television series Wagon Train, took a unique approach to his character's development. Recognizing the inconsistency in his character portrayal due to various writers' interpretations, Horton took it upon himself to write a biography for Flint McAuliffe. This effort was to maintain a consistent and coherent character throughout the series. His initiative ensured that Flint was portrayed with the same level of expertise and characteristics in each episode regardless of the writer. Horton's dedication to his role was evident when he shared this insight at the Western Film Festival in Tombstone, Arizona in 2004, highlighting his commitment to the authenticity of his character. This anecdote reflects the actor's deep engagement with his role and his proactive steps to preserve the integrity of his portrayal. Estaban de este lado apenas hace unas horas. Significa que hay un lugar por donde cruzar. Y si encontramos la... In the world of early American frontier adventures, Robert Horton secured the role of Flint McAuliffe, edging out John Smith for the part. This character, inspired by the Gene Levick story, became a familiar face to audiences. Horton's talents were not limited to this role. He also shared the screen with James Best in not just one, but two series, including the one with Barbara Stanwyck. Adding to the show's charm was the character Charlie Wooster, who was affectionately referred to by two names interchangeably, sometimes even within the same episode, reflecting the informal and friendly atmosphere of the time. Quieren caballos para cazar búfalos. Tal vez debamos darles algunos. Conozco estos indios, Coro. Spanning eight seasons, this beloved series offered a mix of black and white and color episodes with the first six and the eighth season presenting hour-long stories, while the seventh season expanded its tales to 90 minutes, showcasing them in vibrant color. The longer episodes found a unique place in syndication, often reserved for weekend airing, contrasting the weekday schedule that favored the shorter installments. Recent programming decisions have seen these color episodes integrated into regular weekday lineups, ensuring a continuous experience for viewers. Robert Fuller, a familiar face in the series, became an inspiration for future generations. Notably, Nancy Stafford and Clarence Gilliard Jr., who later pursued acting careers, admired Fuller's work in their youth, particularly his roles in this series and Laramie. His influence extended beyond the screen, shaping the aspirations of those who would follow in his footsteps. The production of Fuller series, including this one, Laramie and Emergency, shared a common thread, all being filmed at the iconic Universal Studios. This connection not only brought a consistent quality to his work, but also solidified Universal Studios' reputation as a home for television classics. Ahí vienen, señor. Están como a dos kilómetros. ¿El guía los acompaña? Sí, señor. Gracias, sargento. In the journey of a pioneering show, characters often evolve, reflecting the changing dynamics of storytelling. Such was the case with Charles Wooster, whose ability to read fluctuated across episodes. Initially, he was chided for his inability to read, yet later, he was seen engaging with literature and even keeping a scrapbook with personal annotations. This shift highlights the fluid nature of character development in ongoing series. The influence of this show extended beyond its own narrative inspiring future creators. Gene Roddenberry, for instance, drew parallels between the frontier spirit of the show and his vision for space exploration in his creation of Star Trek. Gene L. Kuhn, a writer for the show, contributed significantly to this legacy with numerous episodes. Connections formed on set often lead to lasting collaborations. Robert Fuller's work with friends across different series is a testament to the strong bonds formed in the industry.
as partnerships span various shows, creating memorable television moments and showcasing the camaraderie behind the scenes. Es muy amable, Mayor Adams. Lo mencionaré en mi informe. In the landscape of television westerns, connections between actors and their roles often cross paths. Robert Fuller, known for his role in the show, had previously worked with John McIntyre, who later joined the cast on the series Laramie. The transition of cast members was not uncommon, as seen when Ward Bond was succeeded by McIntyre, both of whom shared the experience of working under the direction of John Ford in their film careers. In a similar vein, Robert Horton maintained a consistent on-screen presence by using the same chestnut Appaloosa and gun belt across different shows, mirroring the practice of actors like John Wayne, who brought a signature style to their roles across various films. On the set, tension was palpable between Ward Bond and Robert Horton, leading to a challenging work environment. Horton claimed Bond had spread damaging rumors about him, but despite this, they managed to resolve their conflict shortly before Bond's passing. In a unique twist of casting, Michael Burns appeared in five separate roles before becoming a regular, portraying Barnaby West from 1963. The show's memorable theme music has its origins in Jerome Morris's composition for the film The Jayhawkers, and Morris's involvement with the series as a composer for a brief period added a distinctive musical element to the show's identity. During his final season on a well-known Western series, Robert Horton was absent for 20 episodes due to commitments in musical theater. Among the show's episodes, three have become publicly available, the stories of Malachi Hobart, Dr. Denker, and Bill Hawks. In its debut season, the show received sponsorship from the Edsel division of the Ford Motor Company. In the landscape of classic television, the passing of Terry Wilson marked a significant moment, leaving Robert Horton as the sole remaining member from the original cast. Denny Miller was widely recognized for his portrayal of Duke Shannon, becoming a familiar face to audiences. Meanwhile, Morgan Woodward distinguished himself with a record number of guest appearances, not only on this show, but also on Gunsmoke, showcasing his adaptability across various roles in the Western genre. In the early days of television, actors often performed their own stunts, and relationships formed on set could shape careers. Such was the case for Robert Horton, who, before sharing the screen with Frank McGrath, relied on him for stunt work in earlier films. Horton, known for his skilled horsemanship, brought his own Appaloosa horse to the set, a choice that added authenticity to his roles. Ward Bond's career faced challenges due to his political views, which aligned with the ultra-right. His active participation in blacklisting individuals with opposing views left him isolated in Hollywood. Only through the support of like-minded colleagues could he find work. Despite these setbacks, Bond's talent prevailed, and at the age of 54, he secured a leading role that solidified his status as a television star. A twist of fate intertwined the lives of Ward Bond and singer Johnny Horton. Both men passed away on the same day, leading to the creation of an urban myth about a planned meeting that never occurred. Bond's death marked the end of an era for the show, as he was a pivotal figure on screen, though he held no power behind the scenes. The series continued without him, preserving his legacy as an actor. The journey of a group of families across the plains was first depicted in the film Wagon Master, with Ward Bond leading the ensemble. Although Bond portrayed a different character, this film laid the groundwork for the subsequent television series. Initially, viewers were treated to the sounds of a harmonica player during campfire scenes, a musical touch that was later replaced by a lyrical theme song. The series also marked the final acting role for Ward Bond, who passed away mid-season without any on-screen explanation for his character's sudden absence. No puedes cambiar a un viejo solo por sacarlo del lugar en que vivía, abuelo. Y ya no estés reclamándome. During the production of a well-known series, Martin Landau experienced an unexpected turn of events when his co-star Ward Bond discovered his Jewish heritage and New York background. In a departure from the scripted action, 
Bond struck Landau with a real punch during a fight scene. In another instance, Robert Fuller joined the cast of the show following the end of Laramie, contrary to the belief that he was a direct replacement for Robert Horton. Horton had already departed from the series by the time Fuller came on board. Additionally, Fuller's career included working alongside Dan Durier in various projects, including episodes of Laramie, the series in question, and the film Incident at Phantom Hill. Hay algo que debes saber. ¿Y qué es eso? Tu padre no ha bebido desde que Mike nació. Ajá. ¿Y eso qué importa? In the early episodes, Charlie Wooster was portrayed as a man with a surprising amount of medical knowledge, often acknowledged by Major Adams. However, as the show progressed, this aspect of his character was no longer highlighted, and he displayed little understanding of medical practices. Behind the scenes, Ward Bond faced serious health challenges. Despite being diagnosed with high blood pressure and advised to slow down, he maintained a demanding schedule and continued his heavy drinking habits, which were not made public during that time. In the world of television westerns, casting changes were not uncommon, and this show was no exception. On the same day, July 29, nine years apart, two actors who would become key faces in the series were born. Robert Horton, the original Trail Scout, came into the world in 1924. His departure led to the introduction of Robert Fuller in 1933, who stepped into the role, continuing the legacy of the rugged frontier. No podía ser a un niño con oro, así que... In the midst of its journey through the American West, the show faced a real-life tragedy when Ward Bond, who played the beloved wagon master Major Seth Adams, passed away suddenly from a heart attack. This occurred during the production of the fourth season in 1960, leaving the cast and crew to grapple with the loss of their leading man. The series continued, but the absence of Bond's commanding presence marked a significant and somber turning point in its history. Eso Están listos. Yo también estoy listo para recibirlos. 